Here is a special engine. Strange one, too. Pretty small. It's almost half the size of the H.A. Taylor or Stuart Turner undertype, so it's not one of them. But it's a compound here. Unfortunately, it's been FedExed. They uh, kind of smashed a lot of things to pieces. I tell people never use FedEx or UPS or anything like that. Always deliver it in person. Um, this is not the first time that uh, FedEx has smashed up something like this. The exhaust feed water heater, I took it off. You see the control manifold was broken off the bottom. That's where it goes. And there's the part that came out. So I'm going to have to really carefully resolder that. Uh, without unsoldering everything else, you can see in there many, many small tubes. So someone really, really had fun building this. It'd be a very efficient little heater. I'm going to have to sort it out. This control manifold, what happens is, goes from the tank through the feed water pump, and you can either bypass it to the boiler, but if you close this valve, it doesn't bypass. It goes from the pump through the feed water heater, which is heated by exhaust steam tapped from the engine. Exhaust from the low pressure cylinder comes up here, goes to the heater that way, and also goes up the chimney to draft the engine. And the uh, steam that has just heated the water, whatever's left of it, gets bled out. So it's basically a NOR type feed water heater. And cold water goes in one end and comes out the other. And then it is fed to the boiler. And there's also a very interesting little thing going on. They've even got a... If for any reason the check valve jams or anything like that, there's a little pressure relief valve here between the control valves. One control valve sends the water back to the tank so it recirculates. If you don't want to feed the boiler, the other one, when you, uh, when you close it, it feeds the boiler. The other one seems to shut it off to the pump itself. It's also missing its uh, throttle valve. The steam comes from the smoke box in here from the inside. It gets throttled by a valve that should be in a bonnet here, then it goes in the HP chest. But the most interesting thing about the engine is the way it's governed. This governor here actually does not throttle. It does the proper thing, it controls the cutoff. So we have sort of like a Hackworth valve gear here. Non-reversible, but here is minimum travel when the balls are out, and you get very little movement on the HP valve. But of course, when it slow speeds, it's down here, you get a much higher valve travel. In any case, I actually got this model for a group of people. I, I've been sort of accumulating all these friends who, like me, 10 years ago, have an intense interest in this stuff. You know, something worthy of having a big shop with lots of engines, but who don't have any resources at all. Kind of the unspoken for young guys. So I got this engine so that they could buy it off me with no deadline and no time frame. It's a nice thing, and if it had been on, uh, if it had remained for sale where it was, it would have disappeared fairly quickly. So I've started doing this for people um, who are really passionate and who like this stuff. I buy it. Uh, and I just kind of stockpile it until th at such time they can afford to get it themselves, and then I sort of pass it on for the same amount of money I got it for, sometimes less or sometimes even nothing if they're really disadvantaged, because uh, this stuff is all ending up in gigantic hoarded collections, uh, either in museums or rich private collectors, uh, and a lot of the time it doesn't even get paid attention to. Um, I was told that this thing was found under the stairs, which is ridiculous. Um, more than ridiculous, actually. It's kind of just wrong in every way you can think about it. So uh, my my thing is getting access, giving access to people that otherwise would never have it nowadays. Um, but before that happens, I need to repair it and get it working. So, see, this mounts in there with that strap made out of a bent screw. It's pretty clever. It's pretty nicely made. Not the best by any means, but it's fairly nicely made. We've got sort of marine-style big ends there, no wedges or anything like that. Got kind of a cheap way to change valve travel and cut off on the LP. You just move the uh, eccentric hookup up or down the lever. Um, pretty nicely done crossheads with these little taper tapered wedges to secure them to the piston rods. Um, all in all, a pretty nicely put together engine.